why do you cut off the hand of the thief? And this is as a ruling, I'm not, maybe it's not being practiced too much now. One time I saw uh, some kind of uh, interfaith thing on television. It was basically really an opportunity to gang up on the Muslim. So they brought some girl from a university, young girl. They put her on, on this panel and everybody turned on her. You guys cut off the hand of the thief and that's barbaric and how dare you. And so she started to immediately apologize. She said, um, we, we don't do that anymore, only one country is doing it. And she should have just added, inshallah they'll stop soon. You know? So how can you use facts here? Using some facts or any incident, anything. And number of prison <coughs> and the number of people in the prison. Excellent. Excellent. <coughs> Excuse me. So here now you, we can use facts. So they're, they're assuming that you know, prison is better than this, uh, that the sharia prescribed punishment. So if someone steals, you put them in jail. But then there are many problems with that. Many problems with that. You know, for one, if somebody steals something and you put them in jail, you're not just punishing him. You're punishing a number of people, right? If, you know, if that person's married, you're punishing his wife. Or maybe you're giving her a treat, <laughs> depending on... All right, sisters? <laughs> so, you're punishing the wife, the parents, the children. All these people are not, being, are not going to see this individual anymore. Then they go to jail, and then they're treated really, really badly there. And uh, then you can look at other statistics. For example, uh, like 82% of people who leave prison, they return. So that means it doesn't rehabilitate. It's very bad. Yeah? Actually, one time a friend of mine, he, he used to give a halaqa at the prison. So one time he asked the prisoners, he said, who in here would rather have their hand cut off today and be with their family tomorrow? What do you think is of the percentage of people who put their hands up? What do you think? Every single one of them. 100% of them put their hands up. Yeah, take it off. I want to be with my family tomorrow. This place is a nightmare. Get, and that's, they don't even get the prescribed punishment. Yeah, I mean, someone stole and the judge says, your punishment is that you're kept away from society for 15 years. But is that the only punishment that he gets? No. Yeah, and he's beaten, he's attacked, he's insulted, and, and it's legal to beat him up really bad and stuff. All these things, we're talking about human rights and all this is happening here. And so it has become a big business, you know. You know, since the 80s, like... Uh, Spending on, on public schools and on education has increased by 74% since the 80s until now. But on prisons, 314%. So it's, it's business. And these people go and they come back again and it just gets worse and worse and worse. So, so they're cutting off the, the hand of the thief, it's a deterrent and it works. For, for decades in Islamic history, there were only six hands that were cut. Just six. Just six hands that were cut. Compared to, now if you want to use statistics, you know, every 16 seconds, a, a, a car is stolen. Every 18 seconds, a house is broken into. Every 6 seconds, a woman is assaulted. We're talking about seconds now. Seconds. Versus, you know, 70 years, 100 years, of six hands being cut only. And by the way, the Sharia is not bloodthirsty. I mean, a lot of people, even, even Muslims, they imagine that the Sharia, like the state, wants blood. You know? Like that's how it operates. Remember as a kid there was this movie, this guy goes to Turkey and he steals an orange and they capture him and they bring him to this place in the market where all these people are just standing around and they're cheering as people's hands get cut off. Like these are just regular Muslims, they're just standing there and then you know the camera cuts away and you just hear a hand being cut and all these Muslims go, ah, they're so happy. <laughs> like is this a Muslim state, people just want to see blood? Like hey, so, hey you free? Let's go watch some hands being cut off. Yeah, let's go. We go and just like, yes! And they're so happy that the hand was cut. And, and plus, I mean, do you cut off the hand for an orange in Islam? It's just all inaccurate. The Islamic State is not bloodthirsty. Yeah? And uh, you know, when you look at the, the rulings for, for zina and things like that, uh, the, the idea isn't to try to get people punished. Yeah? And even if you look at the stipulations for establishing like, proof that someone has committed zina, they're very difficult, yeah? Like uh, four witnesses, and these witnesses have to have seen something very, very specific. Any, not just movement, but very specific. You know, like, and yeah, they have to have seen Pennsylvania and Virginia. You understand? That's, <laughs> and then they have to be four upright and righteous individuals. Like, you're going to find four mashayikh or like, <laughs> where are you going to find this, Yani? It doesn't happen like that. 
So the idea isn't to try to just get people. You know, the state, the Muslim state isn't out to get people, right? You know the story of the woman who committed zina. She came to the Prophet and he, he turned, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he turned from her. She came again, he turned this side. Or the man who came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, I committed zina. Prophet Sallallahu turned away from him. He came from the other side. One more time, Prophet Sallallahu turned away from him. The third time, Prophet Sallallahu turned away from him. Then he asked him, Abika Junoon, are you crazy? And do you have any mental issues? And he asked uh, his people, about his tribe, about him. In one narration, he had someone smell his mouth to see if he's drunk. In one narration, and he also tells him, La'allaka qabbalt, perhaps you just kissed her. And he says, no, I actually did what a man does with his wife. He's being very specific here. But he, the, the idea, especially if someone is going to testify against themselves, they're actually encouraged in court not to testify against themselves. They're encouraged not to testify against themselves. That's why judges would say, would ask someone, Asaraqt? Did you still say no? He's telling him the answer. Don't testify against yourself. It's not like the state is bloodthirsty or anything. But that's the image you get in Hollywood. That's what a lot of Muslims think. That it's just this barbaric state that wants to see limbs fly, wants to see blood and stuff. But it's a very good deterrent. You know, I always use the example of the, the drug dealer in Saudi Arabia. What happens to the drug dealer in Saudi Arabia? Yeah, it's executed. That's great. I think we should do that in the United States. And then how many cool drug dealers will be driving their, their vehicles with their heads cut off. It would be excellent. Nobody would want to be a drug dealer. Yeah, he's got spinners on his car, but no head. <laughs> Fantastic. Great deterrent, you know. And subhanAllah, these people, they encourage you. There was one drug dealer in New York City. He used to make $60,000 a day from one corner. And he had multiple corners. They say because of this one guy, he was a young guy, he's very popular, he's in jail now. Yeah? Because of him, Tens of shabab went to jail because everyone was trying to be like him. But if his head was cut off, nobody would, try to be, would want to be like him. You know, it's a good deterrent. You should consider that here. Maybe you guys in California can start it. Yeah? California, forget about it. <laughs> so, so then what happens is people try to shame you and uh, put you in the corner and get you to apologize for the religion of Allah. So our system works. It's been proven to work. It's a good deterrent. And that's how it works. It's scary and it's a deterrent. Yeah? Nobody wants their hand cut off, so it's not worth stealing. But there's also another side to it. Yeah? There's the side where yeah, the taqwa, you know, having, being God conscious, that's the first reason you don't want to steal. Then the second, for those who are not, you don't have enough yeah, taqwa, is there's a strong physical deterrent. And that's why it works. That's why in Islamic history there were times when you would leave money and three days later you find it there. Yeah? Any of you ever study the, the laws of Luqata, uh, when you find something on the floor? Anybody? Any, any one of the courses? If you ever study that, you'll never pick up anything off the floor. You don't want to deal with that. It's a huge responsibility, you know? So that's how people were. So, you can use facts to respond to a question or to answer questions.